Welcome back, ladies and gents. On today's show, Ford debuts a tougher Ranger. We look at the collector car market, and GM shows us what the EV Hummer can do. Plus, a DIY nightmare. I'm Tiffany Stone, and this is Haggerty's Daily Driver. Let's buckle up. Ford recently started selling the not-quite Raptor Tremor trim on its big, bad Ford F-250 Super Duty. But if that's too massive for your trail, this might be for you. The Ranger Tremor Off-Road Package. As with the F-250, the Tremor Package is all about suspension upgrades. Fox 2.0 dampers, new steering knuckles, retuned front coils and leaf springs. Plus, knobby 32-inch tires help you get over the rocky parts of your life. The Tremor also gets some of the FX4's best attributes like skid plates, an e-diff, and some electronic nannies to help you get up and down the scary stuff. Inside are new seats with a handy switch console to control accessories you add, like light bars or a compressor. There are no changes to the engine, so you still get the same 270 horsepower turbocharged four-cylinder as the regular Ranger. The Tremor package costs just over $4,000. Is it worth it? Well, it only gets you one more inch of ground clearance. That does improve the truck's approach and breakover angles, but no, just spend money on an aftermarket suspension and get the ground clearance you want. Okay, cool Ford, now give us the Ranger Raptor. And speaking of spending money on cars, it's time for everyone's favorite segment. You pay what? What? <laughs> what? First on deck is a 1970 Chevy Impala that recently sold on Hemmings. By all accounts, this is the 1970 Impala convertible to get. It has the 454 V8 it left the factory with and had a frame off restoration just two years ago despite showing a relatively low 41,000 miles on the clock. Of the over 600,000 Impalas made in 1970, only about 9,500 were convertibles. So it is rare, but when you think Impala, don't you think about cruising in your 6'4"? I know I do. Well, Easy e it just sold for over 65K. What? Why? What? That is a lot of money, which is surprising because Impala prices have basically been flat for nearly a decade. Okay, it's kind of rare, fine. Did you know that you can get a clean 1966 GTO for half the money? That's the muscle car for half. If GTOs are cheap, maybe it's because 90s Volkswagens aren't. Not anymore, at least. This is a 1994 VW Corrado SLC. It looks great, holds four people, and the 176 horsepower V6 engine makes them pretty quick. Just make sure you have a Chilton manual or marry into a VW repair shop. This 39,000 mile example just sold on Bring It Trailer for 30,500. You paid. You paid. What? What? <laughs> okay, it's not a ton of money, but that's not the story. The story is how fast these are appreciating. Here's an auction from 2019. Similar mileage, same engine, no rust. $19,000. That's a 50% jump in one year. If you look at the Haggerty values graph, it looks like a hill climb course. So, if you've got an Impala and want some money, buy two of these, I guess. We're a little over a month away from the official unveiling of the new EV Hummer. So you know what that means. It's teaser time. Yesterday, GMC published a video demonstrating the truck's crab mode. Contrary to the internet's assumption, the mode is not a copy of Rivian's tank mode. The Rivian can turn 360 degrees without any forward movement. Kind of like this. I know, very scientific, right guys? And with the Hummer's crab mode, all four wheels angle themselves in the same direction. Kind of like this. And when they do that, it lets the truck move sideways. Kind of, sort of. <laughs> you know what I mean, this is just paper, but you get it. So which is practical and which is a party trick? Rivian does seem more like a party trick, while Hummer's crab mode, to me, may actually be useful on the trail. So the question is, are you team Rivian or are you team Hummer? Let us know in the comments below. Coming up, our Haggerty community sounds off about their least favorite kind of repair, but first. While small import trucks have had a 20-year head start, 
Ford Ranger has jumped to number one in just two years. If you've ever worked on your own car, you know that certain areas are more challenging than others. For example, changing fluids, not too bad. Rebuilding a transmission, hey, maybe give Davin a call. Our own Sajeev Mehta recently decided to do um, some wiring improvements on his 1983 Lincoln Town car, and this is what he's dealing with. It looks like he's in a cave fighting a consortium of electrical octopi. Don't believe me? Look it up. That's what they're called. This prompted Sajeev to sarcastically wonder, how much fun is it to pull apart a dashboard? So he asked the Haggerty community, and they answered. User Dr. Shin Beckler wanted something simple. He wanted an ashtray in his 2002 Aston Martin DB7 Vantage to close. In most cars, you can pop the ashtray out with your fingers. Not in the Aston. After finding that the service manual provided zero information, the doctor went for it. He had to remove the whole center console, which uncovered a nest of copper snakes and uncertainty. Seems a bit complicated for a simple ashtray. Well, at least his car was whole. What do I mean? I'm talking about community member CT Car Guy and his 2004 Dodge Ram pickup. After getting home, he learned that the heater vent control didn't control much of anything. Heat came out from the vents in the dash, but not the defroster or the floor. His shop manual had some detailed instructions on what to do, which was a lot. First, he had to remove the airbags, drop the steering wheel, remove the A-pillar covers, remove the radio, wait, there's more, remove the glove box, drop the dashboard, and then finally disassemble the heater. And that's when he learned that someone else had tried to do this repair before him, without a manual. I have to read his post to do it justice. Quote, I discovered that someone had tried to do this without the aid of a service manual. I could see where they took a sawzall to the structural steel that held up the dash. They also managed to cut some other wires by accident. When they tried to remove the airbag controller, they bent some pins on the connector, then plugged it in again, causing a 12 volt short circuit that vaporized some pins. Apparently, they gave up and reassembled the mess. I spent four full days on this job. Moral of the story, kids, never take your dash apart without a manual. Have you had a dashboard nightmare? Join our community or let us know in the comments below. Well, that's all for today, but I'll be back tomorrow with more car news. But until then, keep driving.